What I'm building here today is a sand trap. I've got that hand dug well and it pumps really nice. The downside is it picks a few things up out of the ground. Little bits of grit that are in my gravel. If you're just running a hose, doesn't matter. What I've found, however, is it's plugging some of my oscillating sprinkler heads. So I'm trying to come up with a way to solve that problem without expending a lot of time or money. This is what I came up with. The sand trap is going to work a lot like mining equipment does. Here's my pump right here. It's going to pump the water and in that water are little bits of grit. I have got an 18 inch 3 inch run so I'm going from 1 inch pipe to 3 inch pipe so it's going to slow the water down dramatically. The sand and other grit is going to drop out along the bottom of the pipe. As the water flows it's going to cross a T right here. Now I'm going to run the T backwards. So my grit will be coming along and this slope right here is going to capture it and it's going to drop out and then it, the water itself will continue by. In typical draining applications you would have the slope going in such a way that it doesn't trap the water. You should run it like this and then that would allow that water to go past. But I'm not worried about it. I mean we're moving three inch column of water with a uh, three quarter inch draw line, a one inch carry line. It's going to be fine. And so that stuff is going to drop down on the bottoms of the pipe and then as it goes over the top of this it'll fall down inside this pocket right here and come out of the water stream. I'll follow that up with a second sweeper. Again, spaced about 10 inches apart so that any material still carrying can fall down. And once again, the water will be running backwards traditionally. But our grit should not be able to make that corner. At least that's the idea. And I think that using just a handful of plumbing pipe, we can make a very effective passive sand filter that I never have to worry about changing any sort of screens or whatnot on. No maintenance. I am building mine <laughs> at a Schedule 80 PVC ground conduit. I'm doing that because I found this in a dumpster and waste not, want not. Lord knows you do not need anything this tough. But free is free. Because this will be under some pressure, I do recommend the purple cleaning primer. snotty. We'll get this joint, but we'll have to have new glue. Why exactly it's too old. I'm going to have to get new glue before we continue. Oh, much nicer. Ran to the store, replaced my PVC cement, which had gone all snotty. So here we are, back to working on this. You want to make sure that you're attaching them backwards of normal drain so that as that dirt slides along the bottom, it gets caught in the sweeper and goes on out. I think it'll work both ways, but I know it'll work better this way. When I did this, I just made some educated guesses on the size. So this one here is 18 inches, and I'm hoping that'll give that stuff enough time to hit the ground. My, my fill stack, and this will be the part that I'll have to hopefully every few years drain out, that's 10 inches. The distance between the two PVC is again 10. The vertical up is 10. And the vertical down, you guessed it, 10.
comes time to put this other riser stack here on, once again I'm going to go ahead and put them on backwards of what you would consider typical because I want the water to flow around and up. But once again, I've got it backwards acting as that scoop to bring my material down to the bottom. I don't know how big it needs to be in order to work, and I know how big I would build it if I was doing some sort of mining equipment, and that's what I did. I know that if you went with 4 inch main line, you could make all these runs smaller because the water would be moving, you know, slower. At this point, you know, 4 inch fittings cost so much more than 3 inch fittings. Whatever, right? You do not have to use a schedule 80 heavy wall pipe. I, again, I found this I found this piece in the dumpster and whatever, easy come easy go. So I went ahead and used it knowing full well it, it's at least strong enough. The water will come in here and it'll come in out of my pump which has a, a three quarter inch draw line and it'll have a one inch output line and it'll flow through this. Now when it hits the three inch column of water it's going to slow down. At that point the sediment should drop to the bottom of the line, though still moving along with the direction of the water. This sweeper is on backwards, so that as the water goes over the top, the sediment is going to drop down into there. The water then goes. Any remaining sediment, once again, I've got a backward sweeper. But this is a three inch water column, and I'm only pushing a three quarter inch uh, pressure line, so it's going to be fine but I'm hoping that once again any sediment that somehow made it through the first one will will go down and then not make the the sharp corner level right but that'll get mounted underneath the house and I come out of the top of this and I go straight into my pressure tank it should work fine and it should catch every bit of the rust particles at least that's what it looks like and every bit of the sand. It also should catch a fair bit of the silt. And the smaller silt that it doesn't catch should be too small to have any effect whatsoever on my sprinkler valves. So there it is, a sand trap built from trash. Well, if you like that video, you might like these two. The bottom one is us milling up a little Montana fir on our sawmill, and the top one is rebuilding that beautiful Powercraft router, which turned out to be, hands down, the nicest router I've ever used. Surprise, surprise, out of a, another junkyard trash day find. So, they're both good videos, and if you like, you can go ahead and click on them. Thanks for watching.